probably had, well, probably had some objectives coming in. Would you say you met them? What were they to begin with? Too? Really, it was so. just to, to introduce all the new guys. Um, and I think they've really acclimated really, really well here. You know, it started in January with the off-season program that KB runs. And, um, they kind of hit the ground running in that standpoint. So you know, it was kind of a seamless transition as we transitioned from you know, the running and lifting program into actual on-field football stuff. So um, it's, it's been really good. You know, we've been really healthy throughout the entire spring um, with one to go here. So uh, knock on wood, they will get through this one. Um, but we've got a lot of work done, and it's been – you know, really good, obviously, bringing Danton in. Um, so, instituted some new things defensively and just how he does things. And, and I think our defensive players have really picked up really well of that. And then plugging in the, the new faces on the offensive side of the ball, I think, has, has been, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's been good. We've been really pleased with everything that's gone on in the last 14 training sessions. Uh, usually, when a new defensive coordinator comes in, there's kind of a big transition, a big, a big install. It didn't seem like that was necessarily the case. Yeah, not an overhaul. I mean, football's football, so it's 11 on 11. Um, Dan did a great job of mixing with Brian and Ken and Akaika, you know, of what we did, how we called it. You know, there's some things that he did at Baltimore that we do that we kept the same terminology to make it easier on our players. Um, and he learned some new things. And then he brought, actually brought a lot of really good new ideas of what we're doing. So I think the combination of the three existing guys with Ken and Brian and Akaika being here and then Danton real collaborative effort with all four of those guys putting together with what we're doing defensively. Are there any uh, particular players that, you know, considering last time you saw them uh, all camp, that really made an impression as far as progress they've made? Yeah, there's been a lot at every position, you know, and I think that's the good thing about it is that, that we really have a lot of depth. You know, this is will be one of our deepest teams in terms of who can play and how many players we can play. Um, we'll be at 85 scholarships. You know, when we get to the fall, so we're, we feel really good about where we are. Feel really good about our depth as we continue to develop it. And we still have a couple new faces that will show up um, when we get here in June. But you know, by and large, what we have right now is is our team. But there's one or two new, two guys we're waiting on to get here in June. Speaking of depth, um, the transfer portal window came and went. Mm -hmm. Are there any? It doesn't seem like I had any guys that. Well, there was one. But yeah. Was there? Are there any other that are? No. No, we, we, the window's gone and closed, and anybody that went in was on the 30th, and they had to be posted within 48 hours, so the, the transfer window part. Who's ever in the portal is in the portal now. Um, so, you know, we feel really good about our guys, and I think they enjoy being here and understand what going to school here offers them, and, and uh, we're excited. For Adam Cohen, I believe, mm -hmm. he uh, announced he was going in the portal, but mm -hmm. then he was at a practice that yeah. the next day. Is he just finishing out the spring? He's finishing out the spring. Adam's awesome. I love the kid. Uh, played here. He's going to graduate. He's going in the principal yes, portal as a, as a grad. And, you know, he's looking to find a place to play for his last. I think he may have another year because of COVID. Um, but he's given us everything since he's been here. And it's something we extend to everybody. You know, if someone goes in the portal, we, we still want them. You know, if they're brewing for a day or if they're brewing for four years, they're brewing for life. So our job is to help Adam. Um, and he wanted to stay on and be a part of it. And he'll continue to lift. And get strong until he leaves here in June um, with his degree. That's the most important part for us. But um, he, he expressed, and we offer that to everybody. You know, if, if you want to, if you're going to go in the portal, that's great. You know, we'll help you to see if you can get to another spot. And that's that's part of our responsibility in coaching you. But um, he, he wanted to stay around. He's one of the couple guys that have done that. Chase Artopius was with us all last year. Hayden Harris was with us all last year. They went in the portal in December, but still went to the bowl game with us in practice. So um, that's just common practice for us. At quarterback, uh, you know, with Moore and Garvey, it's, it's so interesting because they're, they're so different. You know, Moore is so young, and, and Garvers is more of a, an experienced guy that you know what you got. Mm -hmm. um, and going into the fall, uh, making a decision on, on who's going to be the starter, uh, what kind of goes into that? You, 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 you got a couple, few, obviously, a few non conference games that could get Moore's feet wet, but if Garver starts and maybe he doesn't, it's just interesting to think through. You thought about it more than I have. <laughs> I think it's April. Oh, it's May. I was gonna say it's April, but it's May. But our whole gist going into the spring was everybody needs to get experience, and there's more than just Dante and Ethan. There's Colin Schley, there's Justin Martin, there's, there's Chase Griffin. You know, we've got a bunch of kids in there that, and they're all rotating. If you watch them, you know, one day well, you start once with the ones, and there's a different guy in there every day, and that's was kind of our gist is how can we get quality film on tape. Uh, 
that they can go back and watch. Now, they'll spend a lot of time in the rest of May, June, July, uh, before we get back to camp in August, of going through what we did in the spring. But you learn by doing. So we were just trying to get those guys as many reps as possible, um, get them acclimated to what we do offensively. Obviously, Ethan and Justin and Chase have been here before, but Colin and Dante weren't. Um, and I think all of them have progressed. All of them are better after training session 14 than they were at training session one. So there's a, a progression that's going on there that we're excited about. But um, we have a lot of time before we play our first game. So we haven't had one discussion depth-wise at the quarterback position. It's, you know, Gundy just rotates them. And, and I think their snaps have really been evened out through the, the 14 training sessions. It'll be the same today. And that's kind of what we're trying to do, just get them as many reps as they can so that they can all improve. And then whoever ends up becoming the starter when we get to... September, and I think that'll work itself out on the road. And you practice fast. You get a lot of reps in, yeah. in, in, in practice. Mm -hmm. So at, at the end here, what's the thinking behind not having a spring, you know, like the spring game? We've done this every year. We had a showcase, and, and the Pac-12 just decided they didn't want to show it. So, I mean, we scrimmage every day. We've had this fifth day. We've had officials, so it's really not different than anything that we do. It's it's but we have a big we have a big clutch. Same thing. We we offered the same thing, but we didn't. Um, Pac-12 decided not to. They said they couldn't film it here, although they did film it here for COVID two years ago. So um, we're just trying to get better. 15 training sessions. That's what we're trying to do. How is Dante done? I mean, he's supposed to be a senior in high school. Yeah. Um, Ed, any fatigue? Is he swimming at this point? Is it overwhelming for him? No, it's not. You know, and I think it's a credit to him. Um, Monet's kind of the same way. You know, he always not worried, but you're concerned with kids that come in early. You know, one day they're in the hot lunch line at their high school, and the next day they're on a college campus playing football. You know, it's, it's a unique transition for those guys, but they, they've they've handled it really well. And I think when it will be really beneficial for them is when the new group comes in in June, and they've been here, done that. They've been here since January. So, you know, they don't, they don't act like freshmen. Um, and that's a good thing. I say that in a complimentary way, is that they, they know their way around. They know what they're doing. They know our routines. They know... You know how to get treatment. They know if how everything works kind of around here. So um, they've they've been tremendous. So I'm I'm really the best thing you can say about those guys is they don't they don't act like freshmen. I think they've been here for a while, and that's that's part of it because there's a maturity. And it's a race to maturity in terms of being able to play as a young guy. It's really the, the mature guys that can handle it. And I think um, maybe through his experience and what he did, you know, played at a pretty high profile high school, played in a lot of um, all star games, and he's been around and traveled around a little bit. That, um, but I think he's handled it all really, really well. What's uh, Femi brought to the inside linebacker group? Yeah, um, Femi's been tremendous since we've been here. He's got a great work ethic. Um, he's he loves studying film. You know, he's I always it always seems like he's in our building doing something to you know to make himself a better football player. So his mindset has has really uh, fit in very well with with that whole group. You know, and how Ken teaches. Um, he's obviously got some physical qualities that we really like he's tall he's long you know he covers a lot of space um in a short amount of time you know he's got really good movement skills for a guy that big um he can get into a lot of passing lanes and disrupt some things because of his length um but i really just think it's his work that work ethic and his mindset that have been really really impressive that so far since he got here in january did you watch the ninja warrior competition here we did we filmed tail? that oh yeah okay oh yeah that's uh you know, that I think one of the things we try to do in trying to be efficient in what we do is how can you incorporate a couple different skills into one drill time, you know, and so when you look at your individual period, I think that's just a credit to Ken and how he's maximizing um, what they have to do. You know, you can just do a, a shed blocking drill for five minutes and then you can do a tackling drill for five minutes. Because we'll, we don't have enough time in our training sessions and the way he incorporated all of that is, is a, you know, it's a really good thing to see. And I think it's, it's making those guys you know, think and react, and you know, not only are you training them physically, but you're training them cognitively. So. And Femi was a big guy, and I think tied for the I, best I think he time. did, yeah. Femi, we're happy Femi, so I can say that. <laughs> okay. As far as the depth of that position, obviously you don't have John John yet, and Paul, I mean, what do you think about, the, I guess, the luxury of having, you know, so many yeah. experienced guys? In the don't jinx anything. <laughs> That's what I would say to that. I've been a lot of places, and you're like, man, we've, the one position I feel great about is this, and then three days later, four of them are down, and you're like, oh, my God, we're really hurting at this position. So, um, you know, I think the one thing about that position is it's so integral to our team because of the special teams component, you know. So you're going to see four or five and six linebackers on, whether it be punt or punt return or kickoff, kickoff return. So we're going to use a lot of those guys. Um, we're a two- or three-linebacker system. Um, you want to keep your guys healthy. You want to keep your guys fresh. Are you going to be able to rotate? So 
Um, I don't consider it a luxury. I think it's actually a necessity to have multiple what we call mid-level skill players, you know, here. You know, it's the same thing with the tight end spot. You know, you got to have a bunch of those guys. If you have a bunch of guys 6'2 to 6'4, 6'5 that can run and hit and are physical, um, I think it's not only is it going to impact you both offensively and defensively, but it's going to impact you in teams. Official visits, you're having one of your biggest official visit weekends coming in. What's this been like in, in spring during practice and with transfers officially? Is it, yeah. is it an advantage for them to watch practice? Well, we, we think it is because I, I want people to, you know, sometimes there's unknowns. You know, I think sometimes in the transfer world, it's some kids were promised things or told that this is how it works. And then when they actually see how it works, they're like, well, that's not what I thought it was going to be like. So we want them to unearth everything and you know when they come on weekends and, and we're still training they get to sit in on meetings and see how a coach teaches in a meeting they get to see how a coach teaches on the field um, so that there aren't any unknowns and so if the kid is projecting in his mind hey if I go to school here you know what would it be like well they get to see they get to see what our training table is like they get to see how we meet they get to see how you know our, our players interact in a, in a practice session so um, we, we think it's it's I think it's really important because the, the part of the recruiting process is that our job is to educate them about what UCLA is all about. So it's to expose them for it, not just take a coach's word for it, but they actually get to see it themselves.